Preston Singletary, Ach Sayi, Slinket, Ke Nach, Cochain, Duasalk, Kaguan Tan Achat Sati, Seattle Kwan Ayachat. My name is Preston Singletary, and I'm um, a Clinket tribal member, and I'm from the Kaguantan House Group. I'm from the uh, Eagle Moiety, and I am Killer Whale Clan, and I live in Seattle, Washington. The story of Raven releasing the daylight is one of the most iconic stories of the Clinket people of Southeast Alaska. Many people know the basic story, yet there are dozens of Raven stories told throughout the Pacific Northwest. Each telling is a unique treasure for families, communities, and for all Clinket people. The story you're about to encounter is taken from five Clinket storytellers woven together for this exhibition. In the exhibition, we will journey together with Raven as he brings light into the world through the sun, moon, and stars. The underlying messages of Raven in the Box of Daylight are not only about light entering the world, but also values of family over possessions, forgiveness, and accountability for one's actions. Clinkett historian and mythologist Walter Porter, my friend and mentor, said it this way, the importance of mythology is that it's universal. Each culture has the same information disguised in a story. I hope you'll recognize some of your own story here. Before here was there, Raven was only named Yeh. He was a white bird and the world was in darkness. Raven decides that he'll try to do something about the darkness for himself and for the world. He follows the Nas River where he encounters the fishermen of the night. Fishermen tell Yeh about Nas Shakankawu, the nobleman at the head of the Nas River. The nobleman is wealthy and has a beautiful daughter. He has many treasures in his clan house, including beautifully carved boxes that contain the light. Yeh knows he will not be welcome in the clan house in raven form. He devises a plan to transform himself into a speck of dirt and float into the drinking ladle of the nobleman's daughter. Her servants test the purity of the water by dipping a feather into the ladle. Yeh, in dirt form, is discovered and thrown away. On his second try, he transforms himself into a hemlock needle and floats into her ladle again. Yeh is ingested by Nas Shakankawu Dusik, daughter of the nobleman at the head of the Nas River, and she becomes pregnant with Yeh. The nobleman's family questions the Immaculate Conception, but ultimately accepts it, and Yeh Tukani Yi, baby raven, is born in human form. Yeh Tukani Yi grows into a precocious and precious human boy. Yeh Katsk U, a raven boy, is the beloved son of Nashakan Kawu. The nobleman and his family live in a house filled with wealth. The nobleman spoils the raven boy, giving all he asks for. His grandfather cannot deny him anything. Three carved boxes contain Nashakan Kawu's most prized possessions, the stars, the moon, and the daylight. Raven boy asks for the boxes and is told he cannot have them. He cries and cries for the box of stars and eventually his grandfather relents. Nashakan Kawu gives his grandson the box of stars, which he opens immediately. The stars slip through the smoke hole in the clan house and take their place in the sky. Nashakan Kawu is furious with his grandson. He scolds him. Raven boy becomes inconsolable. His crying breaks his grandfather's heart, so his grandfather gives him the box with the moon. He plays with the moon and releases it. The moon takes its place in the sky. The sun is the final treasure. Even though the boy has been given everything he desires, he tires of being human and decides it's time to leave. Nashakan Kawu protects his final treasure fiercely, but Yeh eventually succeeds in releasing the daylight. Yeh, or Raven, decides it's time to leave and transforms himself back into bird form. Now Shakan Kawu realizes immediately he's been fooled. 
He's so angry that he gathers all the pitch in the clan house in a bedwood box and throws it into the fire. He catches Yank as he's trying to escape out of the smoke hole and holds onto his feet. Raven is covered in soot and smoke from the fire. He's transformed from a white bird to a black bird that we know today. His color marks his sacrifice. His physical form is forever changed for bringing light into the world. As the stars fill the sky and as the moon takes its place, light begins to fill the earth. When the sun takes its place in the sky, bringing daylight to the world, it is frightening to all those who have been in darkness. The people are able to see the world around them for the first time and they're startled. Some of them run off into the woods and they become the animal people. Some of them jump into the sky and become the winged people. Some of them jump into the water and become the water people. Those who remain strong and stubborn become the human people, the human beings. Over time, people started to utilize these symbols, these animal symbols for their crest symbols to represent their families, represent their history, and represent their connection to the natural world. <laughs> 